Hello everyone. Welcome to this video lecture of 19 SC PHY U301. We have been discussing the first chapter complex numbers and this is the story so far. We discuss quadratic equations and their roots in context of complex numbers. Many times the quadratic equations have roots which are complex roots. Then we defined a few definition in relation with complex numbers which are uh, complex conjugate of complex number, modulus of complex number, argument of complex number and then we saw a way to represent a complex number in a plane. This plane is called as the Ergon diagram. This horizontal axis is the real axis and the vertical axis is imaginary axis. In this plane now a complex number z is represented by a point. Suppose the number is z x plus i y then this number is such that if I draw these lines, this line which is uh, parallel to imaginary axis and perpendicular to real axis and this line is parallel to real axis and perpendicular to imaginary axis. Now this distance is z, sorry this distance is x and this length is y and then this becomes the complex number z in the Ergon diagram. Then we saw two different representations of complex number. One is the rectangular representation which is written here. Whenever a complex number is written as x plus i y, it is basically the rectangular representation, rectangular form of that complex number. The other representation is written like this r into cos theta plus i sin theta. This representation stems from the polar coordinate system. In this representation, this r is nothing but mod z or modulus or absolute value of complex number which is square root of x square plus y square. Geometrically, this r or z is the distance between the origin and the point which represents complex number in Ergon diagram. Theta is argument of the complex number which can be calculated by this formula tan inverse of y by x. Geometrically this theta is the rotational angle made by this line, line which joins the origin and the point which represents the complex number with positive real axis. Since it is rotational angle it can either be positive or negative. In this lecture we want to discuss the third form of complex number namely the exponential form of complex number. Before that, we will digress a bit from the topic of complex number. We will discuss how we can expand a function, a real function in power series. Then we will discuss Maclaurin series expansion. Why we are discussing it is because when we consider these three functions, exponential functions, sine function and cos sine function and expand them in Maclaurin series, we can arrive at a formula which is Euler's formula. Euler's formula immediately gives us the exponential representation of complex number when complex number is written in polar form which we already have seen. Let's first discuss the power series expansion of a function. Suppose I have this function f of x. It can be expanded like a0 plus a1x minus x0 plus a2x minus x0 whole square. This is infinite series. So we will have a term a n x minus x0 raised to n and it continues. These a's are called as the coefficients and x0 is a constant and it is said that the function is being expanded about that point x0. Now this expansion is particularly useful when x minus x0 or mod of x minus x0 is less than 0 because in that case higher powers of x minus x0 they will go on decreasing as n increases and therefore the function f of x can be approximated as addition of finite number of turns by ignoring the terms which are of higher powers. We will consider a particular case which is called as the Maclaurin series expansion. This C Maclaurin series expansion is a power series expansion with this x0 equal to 0. So in this series x0 is 0 and therefore the function 
f of x is a0 plus a1x plus a2x square plus a n x raised to n plus this is infinite series. Now we first have to find out the coefficients which can be then plugged in this right hand side. Let's start with the first coefficient. Let me consider this function at x is equal to 0. At x is equal to 0, right hand side is going to be equal to a0. The reason is obvious. All these x or their powers will become 0 at x is equal to 0 and the only term that survives is a0. So we have our first coefficient a0. To get the second coefficients, let's differentiate this function f with respect to x. So let's find out this df by dx which is equal to, now the first term will be 0, it's a constant. Then we have a1 plus 2 into a2 into x plus 3 into a3 into x square and there will be more terms. This nth term will become n into a n into x raised to n minus 1 and so on. Now let's find out differentiation of this function at x is equal to 0. This is the right hand side. So what will happen is all the terms which have x will be cancelled and we will be left with only first term which is a1. So we have the first coefficient a0 then here we have the second coefficient a1. Let me call that as second equation. Then let's again differentiate f prime x to obtain d2f by dx2 which is going to be equal to this first term now will vanish when you diff when we differentiate f with respect to x and therefore on right hand side the first term that we obtain is 2 into a2 and then we have 3 into 2 into a3 x plus third term will be 4 into 3 into a4 into x square plus 5 into 4 into a5 x raised to 3 and it continues. This nth term now will be n into n minus 1 into x raised to n minus 2 and the series then continues. Now f double prime x at x is equal to 0 is 2 into a2. So a2 therefore can be written as 1 by 2 into f double prime x at x is equal to 0. So we have the third coefficient also. Let's now find out the fourth coefficient. For that what we will do is we will again differentiate this f double prime x and find out f 3x. This 3 here suggests that the function is differentiated 3 times with respect to x. 3 into 2 into a3 plus 4 into 3 into 2 into a4 plus this continues the nth term now will be n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 a n x raised to n minus 3 and it is infinite series. To find out a3 what we do we consider this differentiation f3x at x is equal to 0 and therefore this is going to be equal to 3 into 2 into 1 which is nothing but 3 factorial so I will right away write this as 3 factorial into a3 and a3 will turn out to be equal to 1 by 3 factorial into f differentiated 
three times with respect to x and then we have to find out value of that differentiation at x is equal to 0. So this is the fourth coefficient of that power series expansion and this procedure can be repeated forever and then nth coefficient a n is equal to 1 by n factorial f differentiated n number of times and then you find out the differentiation at x is equal to 0. So this way you can find out the coefficients. Let's write the complete expansion of this function f of x in Maclaurin series. It is now f of x at x is equal to 0 plus f prime x at x is equal to 0 into x plus f differentiated twice with respect to x and then that differentiation at x is equal to 0 divided by 2 factorial into x square plus next term is now going to be f3x at x is equal to 0 divided by 3 factorial into x cube and this series continues I'll write the nth term also fn x divided by n factorial into x raised to n this is the Maclaurin series expansion of the function it is very important tool in mathematics Maclaurin series expansion is actually a special case of Taylor series expansion. I will write the Taylor series and you will see why f of x in Taylor series can be expanded about any point x0. So f of x at x is equal to x0. This simply means that we are finding out f of x at x is equal to 0. In case of Maclaurin series, we expand it about 0. In case of Maclaurin series expansion, it can be any point. The next term is f prime x at x is equal to 0 sorry x0 into x minus x0 next term is f2x which is differentiation of x twice with respect to x and it is calculated at x is equal to x0 divided by 2 factorial into x minus x0 square plus nth term will be differentiation of f of x with respect to x n number of times and then you find out the differentiation at x is equal to x0 divided by n factorial into x minus x0 raised to n. So this is the Taylor series expansion. This is Taylor series expansion. Now when you consider the expansion at x is equal to 0 or when x0 is equal to 0 then we get the Maclaurin series expansion we have written it already here not all functions can be expanded in Maclaurin series there are certain conditions which a function should satisfy if it is to be expanded in Maclaurin series expansion or Taylor series expansion can you guess what those conditions are first of all f of x and all its differentiation so f n x both of them should be finite first of all and and it should also be continuous in the domain or about the point in which the series is being expanded so these functions then are called as the analytical functions or Another term which is informally used many times is that these functions are well behaved functions. So when we have functions like this which are finite and their different, all their differentiations are finite at the, about the given point and uh, when the function is continuous then we can expand those function in Maclaurin series expansion. We will now consider Maclaurin series expansion of certain functions. Let's start with f of x is equal to e to the power x we will first expand this function let me write the Maclaurin series expansion once again f of x is f of x at x is equal to 0 plus f prime x 
at x is equal to 0 into x plus next term is f differentiated twice with respect to x and then that differentiation is calculated at x is equal to 0 divided by 2 factorial into x square this continues we have nth term as differentiation of f n number of times calculated at x is equal to 0 divided by n factorial into x raised to n now to expand e raised to x what we need we first need f of x at x is equal to 0 so e to the power x at x is equal to x 0 is 1 then when i differentiate e to the power x once i get the same term e to the power x and therefore f of x at x is equal to 0 is also 1 then this is f prime if i differentiate it again f of 2 of x is also e to the power x and therefore f 2x at x is equal to 0 is also equal to 1 and this is true for in general nth differentiation of e to the power x with respect to x it is going to be equal to 1. Now let us put all these terms back into e to the power x. So first we have f of x which is 1 plus this term is 1 and 1 into x gives me one x plus next term is going to be 1 by 2 factorial into x square third term will be 1 by 3 factorial into x cube and this continues 1 by nth term is 1 by n factorial x raised to n and this is infinite series so this is how you can expand exponential function in Maclaurin series. Let us now expand sine function in Maclaurin series. So, f of x is sin x. Let me write down the Maclaurin series expansion once again. It is f of x at x is equal to 0 plus f prime x at x is equal to 0 into x plus f differentiation differentiated twice with respect to x at x is equal to 0 divided by 2 factorial into x square plus nth term is f differentiated n number of times with respect to x divided by n factorial and this is calculated at x is equal to x0 into x raised to n this is in finite series now to find out expansion of sin x in Maclaurin series we will first find out what is f of x at x is equal to 0 which is nothing but sin 0 and therefore this is equal to 0 then we need f prime x at x is equal to 0 f prime x or differentiation of sin with respect to x is cos x and we have to find out cos x at x is equal to 0 which is equal to 1 then I have to differentiate sin once again with respect to x and then find out that at x is equal to 0 differentiation of cos x is now minus sin x which is which is to be calculated as x is equal to 0 therefore this is equal to 0 then f 3 x is going to be minus cos x and x is equal to x 0 it is minus 1 this is to be calculated at x is equal to 0 now you can convince yourself that all these odd terms will be 0 because at that point this f nth of x is equal to sin x and at x is equal to 0 that sin x vanishes the only terms so all these terms this term will vanish this term will vanish and all the odd terms will vanish and therefore f of x in Maclaurin series expansion becomes x minus x cube by 3 factorial plus 
x raised to 5 by 5 factorial minus x raised to 7 by 7 factorial plus x raised to 9 by 9 factorial and it continues. So this is how you can expand sine function in Maclaurin series expansion. Note couple of things here. Sine function is an odd function, odd function or anti-symmetric function. So if I plot sine x against x, what I get is a sine curve like this. Since now it is odd function, only odd terms survive and there is no term which is even term in the Maclaurin series expansion of sine function. Moreover, what we get is the first term is positive, second term is negative, third term is again positive. So we get alternate positive and negative signs. So there are only odd terms present and alternative positive and negative sign. Let's now expand cosine function in Maclaurin series expansion. So f of x is cos x and Maclaurin series is f of x is equal to f of x at x is equal to 0 plus f prime x at x is equal to 0 into x plus f differentiated two times with respect to x at x is equal to 0 into x square by 2 factorial plus f 3x at x is equal to 0 divided by 3 factorial into x cube and the series continues. Now what I need to find out, I, have to f I first have to figure out all these functions and its differentiations at x is equal to 0 and plug it back to expand cos x in Maclaurin series. So f of x itself at x is equal to 0 is cos x or cos 0 which is equal to 1. f prime x at x is equal to 0 is sin 0 sorry it's minus sin 0 which is equal to 0. f double prime x with at x is equal to 0 is minus cos 0 which is equal to minus 1. f 3x at x is equal to 0 is plus sin 0 which is equal to 0. f 4x now at x is equal to 0 is going to be plus cos 0 which is equal to plus 1. So what we have is only these odd terms survive whereas these even terms they are 0 when we expand cosine in Maclaurin series expansion and therefore if cos x can be written as 1 plus x square by 2 factorial this is minus I'm sorry plus x raised to 4 by 4 factorial minus x raised to 6 by 6 factorial plus x raised to 8 by 8 factorial and the series continues so this is how you can expand cos x in Maclaurin series expansion. Note here that there are no odd terms. It is for the same reason if I plot cos x now as a function of x then cos is even function. What it means is cos of minus x is same as cos of x. And since cos is even function in Maclaurin series expansion of cos x, we have only the even terms, all the odd terms vanish. So this is how you can expand exponential sine and cosine function in Maclaurin series expansion. Now we are going to use that to derive Euler's formula. For that what I'll do is, I'll once again write down expansion of sin x which is 1 minus x cube by 3 factorial sorry the first term is odd there is no even term so this is x plus x raised to 5 by 5 factorial minus x raised to 7 by 7 factorial plus there are only odd terms x is raised to only odd numbers when we have expansion for sin x 
for cosine x only those terms will be there in which x is raised to even power so first is x raised to 0 which is 1 minus x square by 2 factorial plus x raised to 4 by 4 factorial minus x raised to 6 by 6 factorial and this is infinite series e to the power x is 1 plus x plus x square by 2 factorial plus x cube by 3 factorial plus x raised to 4 by 4 factorial and so on. So you can compare these three expansions now. In case of sine, there are only terms in which x is raised to odd power. In cosine x, there are only terms in which x raised to even power. And for e to the power x, all the terms are present. One more difference is in case of sine and cosine, we get alternative positive and negative signs. In case of e to the power x, however, all the terms are positive. To derive Euler's formula, we will expand e to the power i theta. Now, what has changed is it is just like e to the power x, but x now is e to the power i theta. And this then becomes 1 plus i theta plus i square theta square by 2 factorial plus i cube theta cube by 3 factorial plus i raised to 4 theta raised to 4 by 4 factorial and it continues. Now i square is equal to minus 1 because of definition of i, i is square, square root of minus 1. Similarly, if I write i cube then i cube is i into i square therefore it is equal to minus i i raised to 4 is minus 1 into minus 1 which is equal to plus 1 i to the power 5 is i into i to the power 4 so it is equal to plus i so we get i i square i to the power n in general like this let's try to write this more generally if i is such that it is raised to 2 raised to n this is equal to minus 1 or it is equal to plus 1 it is minus 1 when n is odd and it is plus 1 when n is even Similarly, when i is raised to 2 raised to n plus 1, then there are again two possibilities. It can be either minus i or it can be plus i. It is minus i when n is odd and it is plus i when n is even. Let's come back to the Maclaurin series expansion of e to the power i theta now. E to, the, e to the power i theta becomes 1 plus i theta minus theta square by 2 factorial minus i into theta cube by 3 factorial plus theta raised to 4 by 4 factorial. Next term will be plus i into theta raised to 5 by 5 factorial. Next term is minus theta raised to 6 by 6 factorial minus i into theta raised to 7 by 7 factorial and then there are more terms. So all the terms are present when theta is raised to odd number and when theta is raised to even integer. Let's now club together all the real terms and all the imaginary terms. Real terms are the terms in which i is not there. So we have 1, then we have theta raised to 2, then theta raised to 4, theta raised to 6 and here we will have theta raised to 8. So when I collect all the real terms, it becomes 1 minus theta square by 2 factorial plus theta raised to 4 by 4 factorial minus theta raised to 6 by 6 factorial and this series continues plus now let us consider let us let us collect all the imaginary terms in which i is there this one this one this one so it is theta 
minus theta cube by 3 factorial plus theta raised to 5 by 5 factorial and the series continues. Now, if you look at this term, which is the real part of e to expansion of e to the power i theta, it is nothing but cos theta. And this term here in the parenthesis is nothing but sin theta. It is expansion of sin theta in Maclaurin series. So, e to the power i theta therefore is equal to cos theta plus i sin theta. This now is nothing but the Euler's formula that we want to derive. So, this is the Euler's formula. With Euler's formula, it is straightforward to write exponential form of complex number. I will write the Euler's formula once again here. e to the power i theta is cos theta plus i sin theta. I cannot emphasize the importance of Euler's formula in this course and in general for science because it will you will come across Euler's formula many times. This is the Euler's formula. Suppose I have a complex number z which I will consider in polar form. So it is r cos theta plus i sin theta. This is complex number written in polar form. You know how to find out r. r is nothing but mod z which is equal to square root of x square plus y square where x and y are real and imaginary parts of complex number respectively and, and theta is the argument of complex number which can be calculated by using tan inverse of y by x. Can you identify this term here? It is nothing but the right hand side of Euler's formula and therefore z I can write it as r into e to the power i theta. This is nothing but the exponential form of complex number. Why is it called as exponential form? I think it is clear enough. We have e to the power i theta term here. That's why it is called as exponential form. Exponential form is essential to find out many functions of complex number. And so is true for rectangular form. Polar form, however, is just a step to find out the exponential form given a complex number in rectangular form. So let's consider a few examples, conversion of a complex number from one given form to other form. We will start with the first form that we saw, 1 plus root 3 i. This is the complex number written in rectangular form. I want to convert it to exponential form. So first thing I do is I try to plot that in Argand diagram. This is going to be somewhere here with this distance as 1 and this as root 3. It is in the first quadrant. This is r which is equal to mod z and this angle is argument of complex number theta. Let's first find out r now. r is equal to square root of 1 plus root 3 square which is 3 which is equal to 2. To find out theta it is tan inverse of root 3 by 1 or tan inverse of root 3 which is equal to pi by 3 radian. And now I can write down, let's first write, let's write this complex number in polar form. So it is 2 into cos pi by 3 plus i sin pi by 3. If I want to write it in exponential form, it is now going to be of this form r into e to the power i theta, which in this case is 2 into e to the power i pi by 3. So this is how you can write this complex number 1 plus root 3i in exponential form. Now we will consider examples where, exp where complex number is given in exponential form. So z suppose is of this form 6.2 e to the power i pi by 8. Given this complex number, it should be clear that mod z which is equal to r is equal to 6.2 and theta is equal to pi by 8 whenever 
unit is not mentioned it is radian generally it is radian so where do you think the point will be this point is in first quadrant it's such that this is real and this is imaginary so uh, the uh, the angle is pi by 8 so i have to rotate positive real axis by pi by 8 radian which is 22.5 degree positive and then consider a distance which is 6.2 so this angle is pi by 8 radian and the complex number is here now to write this complex number in polar form it is straightforward in polar form this is going to be equal to r which is 6.2 into cos of pi by 8 plus i sine of pi by 8 if i want to convert this complex number in rectangular form it is going to be 6.2 into cos pi by 8 which is real part of the complex number plus i into 6.2 into sin pi by 8 so this is equal to 5.73 plus i into 2.73 so we have converted this number which is in exponential form to first this form which is polar form and finally the same number is converted to rectangular form here Let's consider one more example of conversion from exponential to complex form. Suppose the number is written like this. When the num a complex number when written in exponential form, this is R or modulus. So you know that it has to be positive and real. First, let's plot this complex number. For this complex number now, mod Z or r is equal to 4.2 and theta which is argument of complex number is minus 1.2 since units are not mentioned i'll consider that this is radian this is equal to 68.7 degrees so the complex number is op obtained by rotating this real positive axis by 68.7 degree but in clockwise direction because it is negative so it should be somewhere here this is such that this distance r is equal to 4.2 keep that in mind now this is x and this is y it is clear from the figure that the complex number lies in the fourth quadrant let's try to find out now so this z is equal to first i use euler's formula to write e to the power i theta it is cos of minus 1.2 plus i sine of minus 1.2 and therefore this is going to be 4.2 into cos of 1.2 because cos of minus theta is same as cos theta plus or this is minus 4.2 into sin of 1.2 here i have used the equation where sin of minus theta is equal to minus sin theta and cos of minus theta is equal to cos theta with this equation from the, this first step you can arrive at this step and then we get the rectangular form of complex number which is 1.52 minus 3.9i so this is the complex number in rectangular form here it is written in polar form and this complex number in exponential form is this as we expected since the complex number is in fourth quadrant its real part is positive one plus 1.25 and imaginary part is negative which is minus 3.9 let's summarize this lecture 
Maclaurin series f of x is basically expansion of a function about x is equal to 0 which is f of x is equal to 0 plus f prime at x is equal to 0 plus sorry this is multiplied by x plus f differentiated two times with respect to x and then find out that differentiation at x is equal to 0 divided by 2 factorial into x square plus f3x at x is equal to 0 divided by 3 factorial into x cube. This expansion is called as the Maclaurin series expansion. From when we expand exponential functions sine and cosine, we get the Euler's formula e to the power i theta equal to cos theta plus i sin theta. This is the Euler's formula. To get the Euler's formula, we can expand e to the power i theta in Maclaurin series and then separate the real part which turns out to be same as the cos expansion of cos theta and collect all the imaginary part which turns out to be expansion of sin theta and finally when we have Euler's formula we can easily write down the exponential form of complex number which is this r into e to the power i theta in this r is the modulus of complex number z which is equal to square root of x square plus y square and theta is argument which can be calculated by tan inverse of y by x. This exponential form can immediately be obtained when we write the complex number in polar form r into cos theta plus i sin theta. Now this is nothing but e to the power i theta according to Euler's formula and therefore this is r into e to the power i theta. In next lecture we will consider the basic algebraic operations of complex number addition, subtraction, multiplication and division. Thank you for watching this video.